Jackery is one of the leading names in solar generators, and when I found this Explorer 100 Plus, I couldn't wait to test it out. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be checking out the Jackery Solar Generator. This is the Explorer 100 Plus, and just to give you an idea of its size, this is the box, and that is a Joy-Con. Now, just to give you even more of an idea of the size, let's get rid of the box and show you the Explorer itself. So this thing is tiny when it comes to solar generators, and some may just call it a battery pack, and that's fine. We're going to take a look at all the different specs and see what it can do. And more importantly, I'll give you some use cases that I found this thing to be absolutely perfect for. So let's first take a look at what is inside the box. We'll get rid of this Joy-Con. So of course you've got the Explorer 100 Plus unit right here. That's in the box. Also we've got a USB-C to USB-C cable that came with it. And it's beautiful Jackery orange. And then also for solar charging, We've got a DC8020 to USB-C adapter. And I'll tell you some uses that you can do for this, depending on the type of panels that you have. Obviously, Jackery has their own line of panels that they want to sell you, but with some simple adapters, you can make pretty much any type work. So let's talk about some of the specs that this thing has. Uh, starting off, you can see all the ports right here on the front. So we've got an awful lot of DC ports here and no AC ports, so if you need an AC plug-in for whatever type of machine you have, then this is not the unit for you. So no inverter involved in this. This is just pure battery, all DC input and output. And starting off right in the middle, we've got two USB-C ports here. And those are both inputs and outputs, 100 watts max on either one of them. If you use them both together, you have 110 watts max output. And then sitting right next to that is a USB-A, which is 18 watts max. So that's going to be your typical 5 volt adapter, but it will also do 9 volts at 2 amps and 12 volts at 1.5 amps. So 18 watts total. If you use this with this, you can get 100 watts out and 18 watts out, so that's 118. If you're using both of the USB-Cs together, that's 110 plus 18. That's 128 watts, which is what they call this thing, 128 watt solar generator. Now input wise, of course you can do 100 watts input into any of the USB-C ports, but you would need to have something that generated 100 watts to begin with. So if you had a 100 watt solar panel and you use this adapter here, then yes, you could get at peak sun, you could get 100 watts going into this thing. Or if you had a 100 watt DC wall charger, then you could do the same. Now I used a Ugreen wall charger here and it's got several different outputs depending on what you're going to and one of these ports here is 100 watts max, so that's what I used to test this with. And at 100 watts, you can charge this thing all the way up from zero in about one hour. So that leads us to our capacity. So the capacity of this thing is just under 100 watt hours. I think that's where it gets its name, the 100 plus, but it's like 99.2 watt hours. Now, why is that important? That's important because if you're going to fly with this thing, it has to be under 100 watt hours. So this is completely safe and legal, more importantly, to fly with. So stick it in your backpack and charge up all your devices during your long flight, you'll be good to go. Now let's talk about some of the hiccups that I had testing this thing out. The first hiccup was trying to charge the thing with my 100 watt adapter plugged into one of the 100 watt inputs using their included cable and it only showed about 50 watts max. So I thought, something's obviously wrong. This, uh, either my Ugreen wall charger is lying to me or the Jackery is lying to me. So I grabbed another cable because I thought maybe it could be the cable and I grabbed one of my trusty anchor cables and plugged it in and I got about 60 watts max on here. And you can see that right on the display. It tells you what your capacity is, tells you how much percentage, and it tells you what your input and output wattages are. So I got about 60 watts and I thought, again, something's lying to me. But I looked up those cables on Amazon from where I purchased them, and they were listed as a 60-watt cable. So I thought, uh-oh, maybe nothing's lying to me. It's just the cable's not good. So I jumped on Amazon. I found this pack here, which is 100 watts 
USB-C to USB-C. I got a two-pack for, I think it was like $10, and it was next day delivery, so it's a no-brainer. So I grabbed those, plugged it in, and sure enough, now I had about 97 watts showing on the input display. Now, according to their website, they say that this cable should work. So maybe there's just a problem with mine, but every way I tested it, it was only giving me about 50 watts of input. Now, in the process of all that troubleshooting, I did also take one of my larger solar generators. In fact, I used the Picron LFP600, which I've reviewed on this channel, and it's got a USB-C output of 100 watts. So I did the same test into this, which I wanted to just double check the fact that the Ugreen wall charger wasn't the culprit. And I was getting the same thing when I used the Jackery cable and when I used the anchor cable, I was getting 50 and 60 watts. And then once I used the no name 100 watt cable, I got that full 100 watts. Now, when I tested that, I had the interesting dilemma of what is charging what. When you're using a wall charger like this that only knows how to output power, it's no problem. But if you're using another solar generator that has a USB-C port, which is both an input and an output, then once you plug this thing in, they have to kind of negotiate who's the charging device and who's the charge E. So the first time I plugged it in, actually this Jackery started charging the really big power bank, which was pretty funny. And then I unplugged it and plugged it back in and it worked again. So apparently there is some negotiations and Jackery even says on their frequently asked questions, if you have a device like that, that is both an input and an output, and you're trying to charge this, it says just unplug it and plug it back in several times until you get the desired result. I did some reading on it. It's supposed to be somewhat logical that if you plug it in and it doesn't give you, it gives you an input, but you want an output, unplug it, count to a couple seconds, plug it back in, and it will switch. But I couldn't get any kind of logical result that way. I don't know how many seconds you have to count to. I just kept on unplugging, plugging, until it showed up the way I wanted it to. So now we know the specs. We've got 100 watt hours. We've got 100 watts. Really simple math to understand how long it's going to take to charge at peak power, how long it's going to last at peak power. Basically, if you're inputting 100 watts, it's going to take you an hour. If you're outputting 100 watts, it's going to last an hour. Any variation in between, let's, let's say you have a 33 watt device, then this thing will last for three hours. Outputting 33 watts times that three hours will give you that 100 watt hours. So what kind of use cases did I find this thing to be perfect for? Well, I'll tell you the number one thing I tried it with was my Steam Deck. The Steam Deck takes about 30 watts to power up while it's playing. And if you're playing a graphic intensive game, it'll chew through its internal battery pretty quickly. So you always need to have it either plugged into something or plugged into its charger. And sometimes it's just not feasible to have wherever you're playing this thing you know, a wall charger going across the floor. So I put this right on the armrest of my couch, plugged in the USB-C to USB-C cable right into the Steam Deck, and that gave me, you know, at least an extra three hours of playtime. When the jack reads start getting low, I just go ahead and plug it into the wall charger, let it charge back up, and at that point I'm still playing on the Steam Deck on its own internal battery, and that process worked great. I also did the same thing with my iPad Pro. Sometimes I'm on the couch, just surfing the web or watching YouTube, and I'm watching it on my iPad Pro, which has a USB-C input. And on my couch, I do have one of those little USB-C ports that you can plug in and charge up your phone or your devices. But that thing's only putting out like one watt, and that just does not keep up with an iPad Pro. But having this thing right there, plugged it right in, the iPad Pro only pulls about 18 watts. You can get another five or six hours of use time out of this charging up your iPad Pro. Now, I found that carrying this thing around the house was just absolutely easy. Just bring it into any room that you want, plug it into something to charge it up, plug it into something to keep charged, so it's super convenient. Now, I want to mention one other thing about it, and that was when I was playing on the Steam Deck, I was playing a game with the volume turned off, and I could hear a slight little buzzing coming from this unit. And I didn't hear that before when I was using it with other devices, so I put this right up against my ear to see, and sure enough... I did hear a little tiny hum or clicking or something like that, almost like a fan sound. Now, it's completely possible that there's a fan inside here because you've got 100 watt devices, they need to cool down somehow, but there's absolutely no ports out here, no air vents 
to let any kind of airflow in or out. So if there is a fan, it's just kind of blowing on the components with its own captive air, which probably isn't ideal, but may not be a problem for something this small. So I'm not exactly sure if that buzzing or clicking was a fan. I'm not sure if that's actually supposed to be there, but I only heard it when I had like a Steam Deck plugged in playing a high graphics game. And as soon as I went to like a pause menu or something like that, where the power requirement went down, I didn't hear that anymore. So maybe it's just something in there trying to keep it cool. Maybe it is a defect. I'm not 100% sure. I'm just going to have to keep an eye on that. So overall, I found this thing to be super convenient for those limited use cases. Now, if you've seen the channel, you know I've got a lot of these different solar generators. I've got big ones. I've got small ones. I've got everything in between. I've tested out a bunch of them. This one is unique in the sense that it's so small, but it doesn't have any kind of AC output on it. So that really does limit its use case to just portable devices that are charged up through USB. So it's perfect if you're going to be charging up a Steam Deck or an ROG Ally or any other kind of portable device like an iPad or a phone. It's perfect if you're going to throw it into a backpack on a hike and keep your devices charged up on the fly. It's perfect if you're going to be flying and you want some extra power while you're flying so maybe you can play your Steam Deck on a long flight. But if you do need that AC output for maybe a CPAP machine or anything else, then obviously this is not the unit for you. So let me know if you've got one of these and what you use it for. Throw that down in the comments below. Let me know how you found it to be super useful. Let me know also if your included cable is able to charge at the full 100 watts or not. Now as far as the price and the value and everything, I was able to pick this up during the sale that they had recently on Amazon. And it was normally $150. They usually have a $20 coupon on it making it $130. And on the sale they had it all the way down to $99 and their website had the same sale going on at the same time. So I would keep an eye on Amazon for their sales. They go on all the time. Grab this thing at $99. For that price, if you're looking for something that's portable, that can keep those high-end handheld devices charged up, then I think that's a good deal. You can certainly get power banks like this guy here, which will do 65 watts output for cheaper. But if you want the full capacity of being able to charge this thing up fast, being able to charge it over solar, being able to output 128 watts, charging three things at a time, this would be, again, perfect for travel. You throw this on the nightstand of your hotel, charge your devices overnight, and then charge this thing up during the day. And that's going to be a perfect solution for charging in a hotel room. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you got something out of it, I appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to see more reviews on batteries and solar chargers and all kinds of neat stuff, go ahead and check out the rest of the channel and hit the subscribe button. Let me know if you have any questions, throw them down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer anything that I can. I thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.